Switch 2 looks like it might be overheating. The 59 double D isn't and Intel might just be abandoning what they've been working towards for the last few years. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast this Thursday, July 3rd, 2025. And we're gonna start off today talking about a mass of reports that happen to be coming out of regarding the Switch 2 and potentially it's overheating issues. This is being reported in multiple different areas across the world on multiple different forums. There's been an uptake of messages coming out from Japan about this, but they have particular sold well there, but it turns out that people are experiencing thermal throttling on their Switch 2s, whether they're playing in handheld mode or in docked mode, although it appears to be affecting dock mode more, and it also appears to be affecting higher demanding games such as Cyberpunk or the updated version of Legend of Zelda, with users reporting that it is freezing, it is lagging, it is screaming in terms of the fan going on, and that it is not necessarily a great situation. Now, there are reports that it's happening in lighter games as well as such as Pokemans and otherwise. And Nintendo has responded to this, essentially saying, make sure your Switch is in a well-ventilated area and nothing's blocking the exhaust or intake vents. So they're gonna be a lot of help when it comes to this. We'll keep you updated if this appears to be more of a concern moving forward, or if this is just the limited batch that this is happening to, or maybe the people who are reporting it are actually stuffing their consoles in like little curio cabinets with like blankets in there and they're, they're reporting that it's it's having some trouble. We'll let you know. Well, while Nintendo's dealing with issues of the Switch 2, looks like the people from PlayStation, Mr. PlayStation 5 himself, Jim Cerny, is working on desktop GPUs with AMD. Mark Cerny saying that one of the big things that he's been working on is also going to be coming out to RDNA 5 or whatever AMD ends up calling it, specifically what he said, and that this is just part of Project Amethyst where Sony and AMD have closely collaborated to whip up a few things for the console, but it also appears like a lot of that's going into the desktop market as well. This seems to be very similar to what happened with the PS5 and RDNA 2. They were very closely collaborating and it does appear like some decisions were made by Sony that ended up into the final product for desktop desktop gamers. And one of the big things that got announced out of Project Amethyst is that FSR 4, which is currently limited to RX 9000 series GPUs, is making its way to the PlayStation 5 in 2026 as a replacement for PlayStation Spectral Super Resolution. So this is going to be a free update for PS5 Pro users. Instead of using PSSR, it's going to use FSR 4. And it's not quite clear if they're going to bring it out to lower end GPUs on the desktop because the PS5 Pro isn't RDNA 3. It's also not RDNA 4. It's a hybrid weird mix between it and maybe that's why they're doing it. It might still not come out to any of you who are rocking one of those older GPUs, but we'll let you know how that all progresses. And it looks like Nvidia is not progressing with the name of 5090 Double D for their upcoming GPU that is supposed to conform to the Chinese export restrictions. That doesn't mean that they're not releasing it. It turns out that they're just choosing to go with a less audacious name. They're going to be going with the RTX 5090D V2. Now, this is just going to be a drop in VRAM. It's going to be 24 gigabytes. It's also supposed to be a drop in memory speed. But according to reports, it's not supposed to be much of a drop in price. But thankfully, you have Reese trying to save you some money. Yo, welcome back to YouTube Deals, bringing the hottest tech deals out on the internet. And I'll jump straight into the deals for you guys today. Whoa. <laughs> Starting up, we have the NZXT F240 RGB Core 240mm dual fan. Available in white for only $29.99, making it $25 off and basically the price of a single $140. But then secondly, we have the Insta360 Link 2 with 4K tracking webcam for only $149.99, making it $50 off. And then lastly, if you need something to put that on, you can grab the Samsung Odyssey G3 27-inch 1080p 180Hz VA gaming monitor, going for only $129.99, making it $100 off. And hey, with that, the deals are done. You can find these and more linked in the video description down below. But until next time, I'm Andrew off back to bread for the rest of your hot news. Cheers. Well, Reese, doesn't matter how much money you save me, I still can't get an RTX 5050 to do a review on it because they just aren't existing. Despite the fact that Nvidia said that they were gonna launch to the back half of July, they started appearing at retailers and selling in certain regions as of July 1st, they are listed on Newegg but you can't buy them. 13 different models are actually on the website and they range from 250 to $280. And it doesn't matter because not a single one of them is in stock currently. And so it looks like at this point, they launched it just to launch it. I really can't, it's, it's 
paper launch, I guess, but they also didn't hype it up very much. Very strange ongoing thing with the RTX 5050. It is not, it's not a whelming GPU. I'm not whelmed by it. And turns out Intel is not whelmed by their plans to move forward with 18A. In case you're not familiar, this is the production node that they have been hyping up for a very long time. They've been saying that once they get to 18A, this is gonna solve all of their problems. They're gonna be able to compete with TSMC and make chips for everybody else. Their products are gonna be fantastic because they've figured out how to do small scale engineering. So this was gonna be something Thing that was gonna save the day. However, after a report from Reuters is coming out, it turns out that Intel is considering, or at least presenting to their board of directors, whether or not they should just kill 18A and move on to 14A to better somehow get into the competition a little bit more competitively. It's not quite clear exactly what the strategy is, especially considering that this has been the thing that Intel has been saying for quite some time, we're on 14 nanometers, but 10 nanometers is gonna be great. Oopsie, we can't actually engineer 10 nanometers very well, so we're gonna stay on 14 nanometers forever, but don't you worry, once we get on seven nanometers, everything's gonna be great. But, oh, just kidding, it looks like TSMC has outpaced us completely and our competition's benefiting from TSMC's production rather than what we can make. So just, just wait, we're gonna call it Intel 4, and then we're gonna, you know, drop down to 8 18A or 20A, they had that, but then they skipped that because it was underwhelming. It looks like the strategy that we have been supposed to be expecting from Intel is just never manifesting. Now, Intel did respond to various different outlets on this saying that they just don't talk about market rumors and speculations. Reuters saying that this is something that they are putting forward for a vote later this year to figure this out. And it could potentially cost Intel billions of dollars in sunk costs, but might be necessary for things moving forward. Now, they're also saying that Intel should still keep some 18A, just like Intel did produce some 10 nanometer chips. I think it was on mobile that they did that. The 18A, they're likely still going to be producing our small scale chips for Microsoft and Amazon, as well as some of their Panther-like laptops. But it doesn't look like this is gonna be the full-scale rollout to destroy TSMC and uh, win everything. And it does kind of go in line with the rest of what the current CEO is doing, which is undermining everything that Pat Gelsinger kind of had as a strategy moving forward. Pat seemed to have a clear understanding of where they needed to take engineering, and it was gonna take a while. He was uh, upfront about how much it was gonna cost and how long it was gonna take. And he never went out of scope of that. They actually were on pace for everything he was saying, and yet they still gave him the boot. And it looks like the current CEO is trying to distance himself from that entire plan as much as possible. And it also includes that they're gonna get rid of their in-house glass substrate R&D. They're not gonna be looking into that anymore. And yet again, yielding more foundry services to companies like TSMC moving forward. And let's move backwards to what you said in yesterday's episode of Hot News. We got Sir Myself saying Caitlin's, I spelled it right, right? Absolutely, well done. Different cameos during the tech deals are my new favorite thing about tech deals since the Yummy Yummy Deal Master days. Nobody asked her to do it, or maybe Reese did. I don't know, I'm not privy to that conversation, but uh, uh, keep going, Catelyn. Everybody's proud of you. And then Chesno saying, dang it, here I thought my GTX 1070 would live forever. 9070 XT, here I come, buddy. I'm so sorry to break this to you. I have a, I have a, I have a thing to tell you. Everything dies, man. It's gonna, you gotta move on from things. Life, life gets better when you can pass uh, by certain things that you used to hold tightly to and grow and mature. I hope the 9070 XT serves you well. And then Tom Foolery with a Tom Fooling comment saying, I still contend that the American pronunciation of the word aluminum is correct. It's spelled aluminum, not aluminium, LOL. Wrong. It is spelled aluminium. That's how it's spelled when the, the people and the cultures and the countries that say aluminium, it's because it's spelled that way. Look it up. The people who call it aluminum, it's because it's spelled that way. It's like how the British English adds a U to color or favorite. We don't do that here in the United States, but it's there. It just doesn't happen to change the pronunciation all that much. But adding an I to aluminum makes it aluminium. It's, it's just in the spelling. Now you could argue you prefer the American spelling or the British spelling, but it, it is spelled aluminium when, when people say it like that. So I, I don't know, man. I, I like to say all of it. I like to 
just kind of mix and match because it, it gets people all riled up for some reason. Language is like, uh, it developed as like a hyper local thing. It was something that was, you know, used for common people groups to uh, share experiences with and, you know, find a way to actually communicate. And then now we have the global resource of the internet where for some reason we choose to stick to these hyper local pronunciations and then say that other people who don't pronounce it that way are wrong even though you didn't, you're not from the place where that's actually right because it, it, it's just a different culture and you're not part of it. I'm just a tech guy with the guy's face behind me on a piece of glass. And I'm not sure if we'll have hot news tomorrow. We'll see what the plan is. Um, tomorrow is July 4th, uh, which is a holiday here in the United States. I don't know what's going on. If not, we'll see you back here on next week for more of the hottest tech news.